R is a computer programming language for manipulating data, for simulating processes, and for conducting statistical analyses. It was inspired by the commercial statistical package S, which is still available. However, in the 1990s, two New Zealand statisticians, now known collectively as the two R's, rewrote S from scratch, calling it R. So R is in effect a dialect of the language S. R is now maintained by an international team of professional statisticians and computer scientists known as the R Core Team. They are essentially the guardians of the gate in terms of maintaining standards. However, as a public domain enterprise, many people are contributing extensions through the submission of specialist packages. What are the advantages of using R? Well, importantly it's free and it's also growing in popularity in that it is now one of the most widely used uh, programming platforms for statistical analysis in the world. It's available in a range of formats including Windows, Mac and Linux. There's a growing library of packages, now over several thousand, that have been developed for all sorts of specialist applications, including data visualization and statistics. It has excellent built-in graphics and analysis functions. And as a programming language is, it provides a great deal of transparency and flexibility in terms of tailor-making your own individual applications. There are, of course, a lot of online manuals and tutorials such as this one for helping you get used to R and the environment. So what are the disadvantages of using R? Well, it's largely, although not exclusively, command line driven rather than relying on pull-down menus. So if you're used to a Windows environment in which you use pull-down menus, your learning curve may be somewhat steeper. The symbolic analysis of R is also extremely limited, so it's hard to do proper math like symbolic integration or symbolic differentiation that you might do in Mathematica, for instance. It's also rather slow in executing complex code, so if you have a very detailed simulation, you might consider another programming language. It's rather different in approach from other programming languages and so for this reason again the learning curve may be slightly steeper. When errors are made then they can be difficult to spot although I'll be talking later on about reducing errors and controlling them. Here's what the R console looks like when you initially load it. There are two general areas here in the R console. The first is the workspace, and this is where the code gets implemented. So you can write directly to the workspace in uh, the R programming language and execute it, and you will see the results from executing that code. However, you can also write into a script editor where you're putting down R code, but it's not implemented in the console until you decide to run it. This is very handy because you can build up your scripts. You can also share your scripts with others to show how you conducted a certain analysis or how you simulated a process. So that's the basic R console. However, over the past few years, a number of interfaces have been developed to help you make the most use of R in terms of the programming environment. The interface that we will be looking at and using most frequently throughout this course is RStudio and there's a introduction to RStudio in the very next video. A few things you should know about R at the outset. The first is that R is case sensitive so capital Z would be a different variable from little z say. You should also be very careful with punctuation. So full stop, for example, is different from a comma, and the different forms of inverted quotes are also different from one another. So like most programs, it's fussy. Initially, you'll find that painful, and yet later on you'll grow to embrace its fussiness. Spaces are not allowed, so that my data should be used to define a variable rather than, for example, my space data. 
and when writing long lines of code you can of course continue on to the next line but unless it's in squiggly brackets which I'll explain uh, in a later uh, lecture the appropriate commas should be at the end of each line here is the default color scheme that I'm going to be adopting in this course when showing our code in PowerPoint. Of course, when I show it in our studio, uh, the code will be very apparent. When I'm writing our code, I'm going to be writing it down in red. So, for example, I could say that A gets 3 plus 2, and that is defining A as 3 plus 2, and the next line is saying what is A, and the output in this case would be 5. Now the individual square bracket in front of that 5 refers to the fact that uh, A is a vector with only one element and so it's referring to the very first element of A which is 5 and I'll explain vectors in a subsequent lecture. So for now just understand that uh, it's one element and the value is 5 comments in code are always written in a little hash and then you write your comments and when I'm writing comments uh, here in PowerPoint I'll be writing them in black and typically with a hash behind them so that you know that they are our code comments. Now let's have a little play with R here in PowerPoint and later on we'll see its use in our studio. We can, of course, use R as a glorified calculator. So directly into the console, and you should give this a go, we can type something like 8 plus 9, and the answer is 17. We could also uh, so say something like, what's 3 to the power 3? We would get 27. It has extensive library of mathematical functions, so we could say log of 100 to base 10, and the answer is 2. The default logarithm base is of course natural logs, so if we simply say log rather than define the individual base, then what we would have uh, is the natural log. We can raise things to powers, exponent of, to uh, power 4, uh, e to the power 4 is 54.59. And uh, there are a built-in library of constants too, so it knows what pi actually is. I'm now going to explain why we tend to use the gets in our code rather than an equal sign, although an equal sign will uh, do the trick just as well. We could define a as the value 3 and then ask what's a plus a and of course the answer will come back as 6. So we could use equal signs. Here is a subsequent piece of code which now defines a as 4. I'm using here the gets. Now when we write subsequent code redefining a value of a it will now use the new value of a so when we ask a here it will give us the value of 4. But here is why we use the gets rather than equal sign. We can say that the new value of a is equal to the old value of a plus 1. This is an assignment statement. It makes no sense as a mathematical equation because a could not equal a plus 1 under any circumstance. But when we define it as an assignment we have a gets a plus 1, what is a, and we would get the answer 5 because the old value of a on the right hand side is 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. So I want to emphasize we could use equals throughout however because the relationship between an assignment statement and an equation is not exactly a clear-cut equivalence that's why our coders like to use uh, these get statements. Unlike other computer programming languages, variables that we use do not need to be declared and typed at the outset. In other programming languages we need to inform the code that we are dealing with an integer, for example, or a real, or a character, or a logical. 
Here in R, we do not have to do that. It makes assumptions about the type depending on how that variable is first assigned.